Hello, welcome once again. Here's a pictorial, maybe to help the viewer understand a little closer. We're talking about oxygen sensors. Before we get to those components, we have to have a basic understanding what's going on in the engine, whether it's V6, V8, four-cylinder, doesn't matter. Obviously, we need air being drawn in. <clears throat> Once that air is being drawn in, we have the computer giving the fuel from fuel injectors. These are fuel injectors. We have a spark to ignite that air-fuel ratio. This air-fuel ratio, which is in, which is being drawn into the intake manifold, as it's called, will create high pressure, high temperature. And that's exactly what we want. Because when that piston comes up it compresses that air fuel ratio the more the compression the better the outcome and the better the combustion the burning process as they call it so therefore these are the fuel injectors if you have fuel inject if you have a v6 you'll have six of these if you have a four cylinder you have four of these if you have a v8 you'll have eight of these one in each cylinder so we have a problem air is being drawn in fuel is being commanded by the computer spark is also being commanded by the computer by the ignition coil being turned on and off when it turns off it creates a, a collapsing magnetic field which is then induced or transported to the spark plugs or the distributor wherever it has to go in each cylinder so therefore timing is crucial now we want to know how was the combustion in this engine how well was it and when i mean well how was it, how was the burning process we need something called an airflow ratio of a stometric uh, ratio called 14.7 parts air to one part fuel that will give us the proper emissions. These are the exhaust. This is <clears throat> the these are the the um, filter, air filter. Air is being drawn in into the intake chamber. There's an intake chamber over here. The exhaust is over here. The exhaust is here. So when you have a V6, you can have three cylinders here, three cylinders here. And that output, I call it an output, that air fuel ratio that has been burned comes out here for this bank, for the other bank they call it, will come out here. The catal catalytic converter will go. Make sure that <clears throat> the levels of hydrocarbons, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxides, oxides of nitrogen all these elements is a chemical reaction to make sure that the level is proper for emissions so it doesn't pollute the air we have a problem we want to know how good the air fuel ratio was burned again where are we going to put an oxygen sensor can we put it over here that won't help you know why because the burning is not here the burning is internally in the combustion chamber so where would be a good point to put oxygen sensors? Because oxygen sensor, as the name indicates, will give you a will give you an indication of the content of oxygen. Therefore, I know how well, since air is a product of of oxygen. So therefore, if we know the oxygen, whether it was high or was low. We know how well the combustion, the burning process went. So where are we going to put it? We're going to put in the output. This I call the input. This is the output. Whatever comes out tells us how good this engine performed and how good the fuel was and how good the air was. More air, more fuel. Less air, less fuel. Again, we want to make sure that it's in that ratio, 14.7 to 1. So we're going to put oxygen sensors. We're going to put them in the exhaust. One bank and exhaust the other one. We're going to put it before the catalytic converter and after the catalytic converter. Four, sometimes five, times times six, in order to show us how good the catalytic converter is doing its job before it goes out 
to the tailpipe. And also we're going to put it over here so we know to adjust at the computer if there is a problem, which you can't get that air fuel mixture perfect every time. We always have to make adjustments. So in other words, if there was too much too much oxygen, that means you, you're running lean, not enough fuel. The computer says I have to put more fuel. And we'll, we'll look at an example. If you have less oxygen content coming out, that means you're on more fuel, you're running rich, you have too much fuel. The computer says, I'll take away fuel. How does he take away? These fuel injectors. You either keep them on longer <coughs> or shorter time. <clears throat> so let's understand what's going on here. The oxygen sensor, as I showed you on the schematic so many times, the oxygen sensor will tell us how much oxygen content is in the output or the exhaust of the engine. By that matter, we can go and we can detect or we can have an idea how much burning of the air-fuel ratio, how close it was to 14.7 to 1. Now, there's four connections to the oxygen sensor, the heater and the sensor itself. The heater is two wires over here. This is the terminal, this is the connector. We talk about 12 volts, we put 12 volts to the heater and the, and the sensor terminals, they all get 12 volts. This is the heater, it has to heat up the, the oxygen sensor to about 600, 700 degrees, like a toaster oven, right? You have a heater element. So therefore, this requires two heater terminals and this requires the sensor itself. So therefore, there are four terminals. Sometimes there's even five. Now, as I said before, in conclusion, or to reiterate, we want air is coming into air is coming in, fuel is coming in by the computer. We have control of the fuel. We don't have control about the air. The air is all around us. But the computer can control how much fuel is being developed or given to each cylinder in the engine. But the computer says no. I have to know. What came out of the exhaust first? That's where he comes in. We have to have them on the exhaust. Now, when you look at, and we just spoke about, the oxygen sensor, there's a voltage going up and down on these sensor terminals. Now, the best way is to put a scanner. And you can see it much more graphically wise. So, now, so if you put a multimeter, it'll go up and down in voltage, but you won't get the graph, and that's what you're looking for. This is called oscillations. And let's explain what this is. And what's, let's explain what rich, and let's explain what lean is. This is the fundamental of fuel injection. Again, the, compu the, the computer has to correct it, has to correct the air fuel mixture. In order to do that, it has to have sensors. Sensors give information. Information is given over to the computer. The computer says, <clears throat> I either have to take away fuel or I have to give fuel. According to how much more air, more fuel. Less air, less fuel. The, the midpoint of the oxygen sensor, if you put a multimeter over here, these two points, it could be about 0.45 volt or 450 millivolts. Not to confuse you, let's go with volts. 0.45 volts is the midway line. When it's oscillating, meaning it's getting it, it, it's it's getting the oxygen content from the exhaust that just came out of the engine after it was burned. Too rich, we just spoke about. Rich means <clears throat> rich means. We have too little air for too much fuel. Lean is the opposite. Too much, air, too much air for too little fuel. Not this one is good and not this one is good. So the computer says, if it's too rich, I have to take away fuel. If it's too lean, I have to add fuel. 
that's another part of it. Those are called fuel trims. Short fuel trims, that's something else. But however, 0.45 volt is the midpoint. We want to see this oxygen sensor going up, going down, from let's say zero to one volt. What at why? We, this is called oscillation, meaning it starts at one point, it goes up to another voltage, 0.60 in this one, goes back down to 0.45, and goes back down even lower to 0.30. Comes back up to the original one, 0.45, comes back up to 0.60. Goes back down to 0.45, comes back down to 0.30, goes back up, and it's going to go over and over and over. This is, we want this. We want to see these oscillations. That means that the, 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 the oxygen sensor is detecting these changes, either rich or lean conditions, and then we will adjust, the computer will adjust what? The fuel injectors to either give more fuel or less fuel. Why? So we, we can have that 14.7 parts of air to one part of fuel as close as possible so we have good pollutants, good emissions coming out of the catalytic converter. This is the ideal type. If you would put your, your scope here, if you would put your scanner, <clears throat> you want it to go up and down, up and down, up and down. Let's look at the other part. <clears throat> Notice the difference. It was still 0.45, but what happened? Lean too long, see? This will give you diagnostic trouble codes. Because it's always in the lean. You don't want that. That means something that's coming out of the doors is much too lean. Too much air for too little fuel. We want to see this back and forth. Instead, we're only seeing too much air, too little fuel. That means... The computer is not adjusting the fuel injectors, and what we're getting is a lean condition all the time. So in other words, so it's going to be too much air for too little fuel. We have to adjust it by giving more fuel. What about the opposite? This is the exact opposite of this. Flip it. Now we're running too rich. Could it be the senses? Of course. But the computer has to make... A determination is said we're running too rich. What does rich mean? Too much fuel. What do we do? We take away fuel and hope that it will go down. It will come down and normalize. It doesn't. See? Look at the cycles. Stays up, stays up, stays up. Not this is good. Not this is good. What about if we still have it in the midpoint, point 0.45, a lazy one? This is not good either. We want it to go up, come back down, come back down, come back up, come back up, always oscillating, oscillating, going, varying from voltage to voltage to voltage. This is not good either. This is why I, I made the point. The best one is oscillations, they call it. Oscillation is like sine waves. You're producing something, the oxygen sensor is detecting either too much oxygen uh, content or less oxygen content. Go to the computer. Computer says, those fuel injectors, I'm going to control them now. Too much, too much fuel. What am I going to do to the fuel injectors? I'll decrease the time that they are on. I'll shorten the time by a pulse with modulation. Let them spray less fuel. If it's lean, meaning... Not too much, not enough fuel. What is the computer going to do? I'm going to turn the pulse width higher, wider. I'm going to allow more fuel to the fuel injectors. They'll spray more fuel. Constantly, constantly, constantly. Oxygen sensors are, are the most important. They're your feedback to the computer to tell you how, cool, how good the combustion, the, the, the burning process is being done inside the engine. These are the fundamentals, the basics of fuel injection. In the beginning, when it's cold, we're in something called open loop. We have to wait until the heated sensor heats up this oxygen sensor, like we said, to 600, 700 degrees. And then the computer says, now I will pay attention to you. Now I will adjust more fuel or less fuel. 
the beginning, he ignores him. At the end, when he's enough, then he goes and he pays attention to him. So please go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto, where you'll see more of uh, uh, some hands-on, some uh, mass airflow sensors, some uh, battery testing. Also, how to test relays, very important in circuit. Uh, hopefully, when I get the other one, monetize of the channel or motive will try some by those i'll do more hands-on but we have to know the fundamentals first if i put a scanner which i did uh the people commented they didn't understand what was going on when i put the scanner on it that's why i feel i have to go over these things you have to understand the basics you have to anyway thanks for watching